So last summer when we got this report, it wasn't your, your typical report. It was a high profile uh, report. Um, I asked uh, Secretary Moran, what does your team think about OSIG's report on the parole process for Mr. Martin? And the response was, uh, we uh, are very critical of it. We think it is highly biased. We think it is, uh, omits sections of code that are very relevant to the process to parole him. It points to some sections of code that are incorrect. And there's substantial commentary on the kind of individual that Mr. Martin is that has nothing to do with the parole process that they were supposed to look at. And in his parole packet, there was substantial write-ups on Mr. Martin's behavior while incarcerated uh, that were omitted if we're talking about writing about the kind of person that Mr. Martin uh, is. So Mr. Martin, who was eligible for parole starting in 1994, was paroled last summer, and this report came out, or last year, and this report came out. So I did what anyone would do. I called the Inspector General and said, I'd like your team to come over and discuss with our team your findings. We have some questions. We have some concerns that the report, six-page report, is not particularly accurate, and we would like to hear from you. Uh, that team came in. There was about four folks from the Inspector General's office that came in, four individuals from our office that met. We went into that meeting thinking that there was bias and there was lack of objectivity. We left that meeting knowing that there was bias and a lack of objectivity in that report. Uh, it has gone unreported on since last year, our very minimal reporting, but the parole board itself came out with a point-by-point -point rebuttal to that six-page report, pointing out chapter and verse why they had concerns with OSIG's findings, why they did not think those were accurate, and while that may be mundane and very detailed-based, it is fact-based, and we need to deal with facts when it comes to this case. So fast forward uh, to yesterday, apparently there is a a uh, lawsuit that has been dropped by uh, an individual who is the primary author of this OSUG report. She's been put on leave by her employer, which involves an active state police investigation into leaks from draft reports out of OSIG's office. And those draft reports include unsubstantiated claims that are being bandied about as fact uh, by political opponents. Incredibly irresponsible. The Inspector General is required by law, if he comes across any credible example of criminal activity, to pass that on to law enforcement, be that a Commonwealth attorney, be that a state police. The Inspector General has done no such thing. The governor has called for an investigation, an independent investigation. We have leaks starting last summer, including by members of the General Assembly, that violate the same code sections that the OSIGS report deals with. 